da, 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 da. Ooh. Hey there, hackers. Oh. Let's get portable. Welcome to the HDMI output of my computer. So to get started with installing Arch Linux in a portable fashion, we need to format the disks. But first we need to make sure we have Wi-Fi, so let's do Wi-Fi menu. Once it scans for the networks, enter the correct security passcode, and then it should be able to come up with no problems. Now, all this random output and debug messages and errors is annoying, so do dmessage dash capital D, and that will shut it up. Let's go ahead and list all the attached devices. We're going to be using SDA, so let's run fdisk slash dev slash SDA. Let's get started with a new partition by using N. We're going to accept the defaults for a primary partition and for the number one. We'll keep the default start sector and we'll go ahead and give it an offset of 500 megabytes. This will be the UEFI partition. This error that you see is because I had formatted it previously. Let's go ahead and set up the type for this by using T. And when we get to the options, we'll use the EF code to state that it's an EFI FAT32. Let's go ahead and add a new partition for Linux. We'll accept the defaults, and we don't need to worry about the type. Then we just repeat what we did with the FAT partition before to make another shared partition. Now, all we have to do is use A to set the boot flag on the Linux partition. This is for BIOS mode. Once that's good, we write it. The next thing that we're going to do is create the file system for each partition. So we'll make a FAT32 file system on the UEFI partition, which is now under dev slash SDA1. We'll go ahead and do that for SDA3, which is our shared partition. And then we'll use the make file system for ext4 this time for the second partition, SDA2, which is our Linux partition. So let's go ahead and mount the Linux partition. Now let's go ahead and create the boot directory where we store all our UAFI stuff. Let's go ahead and mount the UAFI partition to the boot directory. And let's go ahead and packstrap the system. Now, I'm going to use base and base devel so I can do some development. And if you do that and you try to go on later and do make init CPIO, it will not be found. This is because Arch Linux has changed recently to where now you have to specify the kernel, which is Linux, and we'll go ahead and use the Linux firmware. Once that all installs, then you should be able to go smoothly like you used to before. It's just a couple little extra commands when you packstrap it. So let's go ahead and create the shared directory, and let's go ahead and mount it. This is important when we use the F stab, so that way we will auto-mount the shared partition whenever we start up Linux. Let's go ahead and chirrut into the system. And from here, let's go ahead and start some basics of the setup. I'm going to go ahead and set the time zone to Chicago because I've been listening to Frank Sinatra recently, and Chicago is his kind of town. Let's go ahead and synchronize the hardware clock. And let's get started by installing Vim because there are no text editors by default in this new version of Arch Linux. 
So I'm going to go ahead and edit the locale. I'm going to go ahead and use United States UTF-8. And then run locale gen to generate it. Let's go ahead and echo the host name. And then let's go ahead and edit the host's file in accordance with the Arch Linux installation process. We'll go ahead and set local host as well as local domain for IPv4 and IPv6. And yes, Porta Archie is a pun on Porta Potty. Because it's a Porta Arch Linux, so Porta Archie, right? Once we exit out of that, let's move on to the next step. Let's edit the configuration file for making it CPIO. We're going to go to the hooks line, and we're going to take block and put it after udev. This allows it to function a little bit better in a portable mode. Let's go ahead and run the make init CPIO and link it to our Linux kernel. Let's go ahead and fix the internet rules and reset all the interface devices to their defaults. This will make it easier to configure in the future and not platform specific. So let's go ahead and edit the journal configuration file. First thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go down to storage. We're gonna wanna change auto to volatile. The next thing that we're going to want to do is go to system max use and we're going to want to give it a limit. In this case, 16 megs. And then let's edit the F stab. Here we're going to want to go to the first UUID for the Linux system and change real time to no A time. This will allow it to function better in a portable USB mode like a live CD. After that, let's go ahead and install Grub as well as the EFI boot manager. And we will use both to install a BIOS and UEFI compatible version. Let's start with the BIOS. Everything looks fine. If you have an error, you might have to flat out the drive again and start from scratch. Let's go ahead and install the EFI. And we use the removable flag, so that way it understands that this is going to be more like a live CD or a portable installation. Great, now we have UEFI and BIOS compatibility for booting. Let's go ahead and do our grub make config to build the file. Let's go ahead and check the file. It looks like it worked out. In here, all you have to do is just make sure that the set root is set to UUIDs rather than uh, specific devices like dev SDA. Everything looks good and checks out. So let's go ahead and start installing some networking tools.
let's go ahead and install a bunch of different video drivers. We'll be using ATI, NVIDIA, or the Nouveau driver, as well as Intel. If you want to install any other video drivers, you can do so as well. Once everything's installed, let's go ahead and install the input synaptics for trackpads if you're running this on a laptop. And then we'll go ahead and add ACPI, sudo, polkit, and all the things that we would need to use to get a nice command line as well as simple desktop experience. So it seems like YCD has different package names and I don't really need it, so I'm just going to go ahead and install everything. Now let's edit the rest of it and set it up like we normally would. I'm just doing different things such as setting up a user, making sure that the SU doers file allows the basic user, not having a password to log in, which I strongly recommend you do not do. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and test this out on a couple different machines. The first one that we're going to start with is an old Razorblade Stealth from 2017, and then a really good old Dell Latitude X-T2 from who knows when. This was a hand-me-down, so let's see. Thanks for watching, and Hatty Hacking. Oh. Next time, let's talk about why I left Linux and went to Windows. What?